Here we are today with Dr. Liz Lista. John Coleman and I are going to find out stuff that's going to make our life and your life better. Dr. Liz, you're the lady to do it. You, you're always full of great right. information. I want to follow up on a conversation we had recently. We were talking about exercise and how exercise can uh, trigger and help our hormonal balance and all of that stuff. In that conversation, you touched on sleep, how, mm -hmm. how exercise can help us um, release more uh, hormones that help us sleep. I, I wanted to explore the connection between sleep and hormones. Can you do that for us? Yeah, absolutely. So I love that topic. Yeah. Yeah. It's really incredible how much goes on while we're sleeping. All right. There's just so much cleanup in the body, brain scrubbing bubbles going, uh, and just very, very important. And particularly, and of course, my, my favorite topic of hormone and hormone balance, and it goes even way beyond melatonin. Most people are aware that melatonin is related to sleep, right? We've talked sure. about that. And our brain is releasing melatonin once we perceive darkness. And as the sun comes up and as sunlight enters our eyes, the pineal gland is right behind the eyes and the melatonin production drops off, right? That's why we have to sleep in a nice dark room. We've talked about that. But this is also why blue light type of lighting in the evening can delay sleep onset or be disruptive to sleep because it can be up the melatonin secretion and regulation. Right. Plus, though, for those of us over 50, our audience here, uh, make less melatonin as we get older. So it gets more and more important to keep that in mind, uh, that impact melatonin on sleep and sleep on melatonin. Right. Mm -hmm. That's one hormone. So the so, relationship is, it, it sounds like it really goes both ways. It does. Absolutely. Hormones are messengers and the messages go back and forth right? What we perceive and the things that we do influence the hormones and then the hormones influence how we're feeling, et cetera. So it really is a, a full circle in the body. Definitely. Yeah. And that's why we, we always talk with you about uh, the balancing, balancing of hormones. Mm. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. And we've talked a few times about another very important hormone that is also related to sleep. And that is growth hormone, human growth hormone, and it is released also by the brain straight out to the body, right? A lot of hormones are made by glands. Talk to the brain in a cycle. This is not the case, uh, both with melatonin and now also we're talking about growth hormone. So growth hormone is released while we sleep. So people with disrupted sleep usually have lower growth hormone production. And then improving sleep also helps raise your growth hormone level, right? So there are, for example, one thing we've talked about this, there are supplement peptides that improve growth hormone level and those often help with sleep. Right? So growth hormone, we know the repair hormone helps with cell repair, uh, injury repair. All right, I always tell the story of my kid who was about 12 years old and his, he, his he hit his, his hand got hit by a ball. They were playing handball and his hand, his thumb became this giant purple sausage. And within days, it looked back to normal. And within a couple of weeks, couldn't tell anything had happened. All right. So that is the power of growth hormone in terms of cell and tissue repair. It also influences glucose metabolism. So sugar process in the body, which of course in turn, impacts our metabolism and weight, all right? I've had women in my practice who struggle all year during the school year with their kids are in school and they're struggling, struggling with their weight. Then it becomes summer. They don't have to be up as early to get kids to school. And what do you know? Their same efforts result in some weight loss and yeah. the needle starts to move. So yeah. this is really a critical component of having good metabolism, good sugar processing, and being able to manage weight. Fairly, really critical. And growth hormone is one of the ways, in addition to immune system, right? We know that our sleep is disrupted. 
and weaken our immune system and growth hormone is also related to that. Hmm. So uh, uh, I guess there's a message of the, uh, and that you, people can go back and take a look at some of the conversations we've had, but if you can get better uh, sleep habits, uh, it, it's probably going to improve your entire health ecosystem within your body. Uh, it's not easy for everybody, especially some old uh, guys in, the, in our audience who uh, get up a couple of times in the middle of the night because uh, they have uh, uh, prostate issues. Uh, and so that uh, doesn't help there. So, but I guess the cleaner you can get to sleep, and get into sound sleep, even if you get up a couple of times for other reasons, uh, it's going to probably improve your over general overall health. That's right. That's exactly right. And for for men and men, if if you're getting up more than two times per night, that's usually time to inquire, talk with your doctor. Maybe for men, maybe get referred to a urologist. Uh, for women, oftentimes their gynecologist can help. It depends. Uh, women also can see a urogynecologist, but once or twice a night is considered the max in terms of normal uh, ability. We could do a whole segment on that. That's a good idea. We're going to talk more about that another time. I have an idea, all right? <laughs> uh, but it's very important. And if you're getting up to use to go pee and you're able to fall right back to sleep and it's really not a just for your sleep, that's probably okay too. A couple more areas that uh, are hormonal uh, influence, uh, again, chicken and egg with sleep. The hunger hormones. Uh, leptin is a hormone that signals us to stop eating. Ghrelin is a hormone that signals that we're hungry and increases appetite. I always remember that one, ghrelin, like her the stomach is growling. That's how I remember that one. So ghrelin increases with sleep disruption. Leptin decreases. I don't know if this has happened to you. It definitely has happened to me when I've had a terrible interrupted night's sleep or travel or some reason that my sleep was disrupted. Again, I got to really try a lot harder to make good food choices the next day because my cravings will activate and uh, it just it impacts the sugar metabolism. Mm -hmm. All right. And it impacts appetite. Right? Also, insulin. Our insulin release is not as smooth and good when we have disrupted sleep. So those are all, I'm, I'm calling all those related to hormone, to hunger right. uh, and metabolism. Those are definitely uh, problematic when our sleep is problematic. Okay. Well, we've talked in the past about how to get a good night's sleep, things we should be doing to prepare for a good night's sleep. But this is fascinating because... It, we're really talking about how a good night's sleep can affect, or a bad night's sleep, can affect our hormones, which, of course, affects everything in our body mm -hmm. one way or the other. Exactly. And there's one more, everyone's heard of this hormone that is really affected by sleep, and that is cortisol. Of cortisol, course. right? We've, definitely, we've talked about it. I'm pretty sure we have. Yeah. Uh, so cortisol is made by our adrenals. And it's supposed to be highest in the morning when we wake up and gradually decline over the course of the day. That's what's supposed to happen. However, if we're stressed and we're making too much cortisol during the night, that can disrupt sleep. That can lead to more uh, difficulty processing blood sugar, and it can lead to weight gain. Right? However, once the adrenals get really tired, then we can have not enough cortisol. And then that's, again... Both of these can have us feeling fatigued. Uh, if we're powering through it, we're going to take a toll on our adrenals. And this is the case for women as well as men, for sure. Are there any dangers with, uh, it seems that there are a lot of uh, advertisements around for things with cortisol or uh, uh, what have you. Uh, should you really be checking with your uh, uh, medical support uh, before you do anything like taking supplements or something for that? Definitely, definitely. You know, there's ways to measure what is happening with your pers personal cortisol response, uh, what's happening with your blood sugar. 
Uh, but it's, it's very important. We have to take care of our adrenals. Uh, so again, it, a lot of things come down to managing our stress. But it's important to know why, why, how does stress harm our health? And one of the ways is by disrupting sleep through disrupted cortisol secretion. Yeah. Wow, great stuff. Well, I think I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> well, let's check your hormones first, Art. Dr. Liz, as always, great information. Really puts things for me into perspective. So thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.